Hello everyone and welcome back to Eurofever Garage. As always, I'm your host Donovan and today's video is going to be an in-depth guide of my cost of ownership for my BMW 4 Series. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to stick around. The final number may surprise you. Um, I know it surprised me. But with that being said, let me give you a brief summary of my history with the car and the thought process behind most of my purchases and, and why I bought what I bought. So if you haven't watched the video already, go check out the F32 review. In that video, I sort of talk about how I got the car, what it's been like to own, and more of the actual driver experience. This is just going to be about the actual costs. So. I got the car in late 2017. Now that it's almost April 2023, it's about five years of ownership. I didn't really start modding the car until 2019, uh, early 2020. So for the first half of, of my ownership, it was mostly just maintenance, keeping the car in tip top shape and getting it to a place where I could mod it. I plan on keeping this car for as long as it's alive uh, and I wanna keep it alive for as long as I can. When I initially was buying this car, the 435s were just out of our budget at the time. If there was one in our budget, it was too high mileage. So this car was bought for $24,000 uh, with 25,000 miles. I wanted something with low miles that wouldn't be too much of an issue in college and I could fix it as, as you know time progressed and the car aged. So with that being said, let's get into the ownership of the car. So I tend to be very meticulous about these kinds of things. I have a whole binder for the car that has my registrations, my work orders, my receipts. Anything that I have done to the car is in that binder. And on top of that, I've made a spreadsheet that I'm able to track my purchases, where I bought them, put the dates of when I did things. But for the most part, I have just a running tally of the things I bought and their cost. So this isn't going to necessarily be when I did it, but I will add some commentary where I feel like that's necessary. So starting off, when we first got the car, we did very basic maintenance, oil change, uh, brake pads and rotors, and got some new tires for the car. Now, I didn't buy this, my dad did, and he was just getting me set up for, for college and making sure that the car was you know, good enough to, to go through um, about a 220 mile trip when I went to and from Dallas and Austin. So it wasn't until my first mod, which was late 2019, I bought the Dynan Sports Tuner, which is the boost controller. And that I got from a Facebook post for $125. And on that trip, I also bought a set of wheels, but I'll bring that up later when I talk about the wheels that I currently have on the car. After the Dynan Sports Tuner, the next thing I bought was the dual slat kidney grills, um, sort of like the M cars have. Uh, these were $42 from Amazon. I really like them. I think the finish is pretty good. They've held up since I put them on and it's been well over three years now. I monitored them very closely to see if any of the finish starts to wear off and fortunately with how affordable they are if they do go then you can just replace them so i think it's a pretty worthwhile uh cosmetic upgrade um it does not have the m color slats uh that's something i despise but if if that's something that's up your alley that's totally you uh, next was the uh, Android navigation system from Avin USA. So I did a lot of extensive research on the system as well as conversing with Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, because he had close conversations with Avin USA on setting it up for our platforms. I really like the system and I think it's a really worthwhile upgrade to modernize your interior because it adds a wider screen, it's touchscreen, it adds CarPlay, and a lot of other features that you obviously couldn't have with just the OEM system. And so after I optioned it out, I got it to 747 and 90 cents shipped. After that, I did the LED bulb conversion. So I did the rear and the front. On the front, I only did the headlights and the turn signals. And in the rear, I replaced every bulb. So starting from the back, we did the reverse signals, which were $16. The turn signals, which were 25 bucks a pair. So uh, one for the front, one for the uh, rear. 
The headlights, which were D1S bulbs, those were $50. And another set of the brake light bulbs because there are two of the same bulbs. That's another $33. After that, we did the Active Auto Works axle back. Um, originally, that cost $650 from Active Auto Works. Uh, the guy that I was buying it off of, he wanted $250. I was able to get it down to $200, so that was an awesome upgrade. Uh, after that, we did the 624 wheels. So, like I mentioned, I originally bought a set of wheels uh, on my first trip to Houston. And unfortunately those didn't fit, but they had really good tires on them. Those are the Continentals that I have on the car now. When I had gotten the wheels, the 624 wheels, I knew that these tires could be swapped over. And so that's what I ended up doing. So I sold the original wheels, got rid of the old tires, unmounted, remounted the new tires, rebalanced everything. And all in all, that came out to a total of $1,250. That also includes having a new finish on top of them. So they were curbed up quite a lot. I was able to use a couple kits from Amazon to sand down the curb rash. And then I had a guy respray over them in a satin finish. And I absolutely love how they came out. That process was really cheap. So, you know, I think overall the cost for actually getting the tires and wheels, it was $1,000. The refinishing touches, that was about 250. Next was the M Sport steering wheel. So as I mentioned, my car was a base trim, so nothing really great. It has the slightly chunkier U-shaped three-spoke design, and that was just a no-go. I wasn't really a big fan of it, and my hands get very sweaty, and so I felt like my hands would always like slide alongside it. Wasn't very big fan, and like I said, I really wanted to do this M Sport steering wheel, but I wanted one that was in new condition, one that wasn't oily and greasy and had that sort of shine to it. On eBay, we found one that had the heated functionality still and paddles, and I was able to get that for $900 plus $100 shipped. So that came out to $1,000.82 after taxes. Really easy install, took about an hour and a half. You, you may need coating depending on what steering wheel you had before, and you can add Bimmer code to your roster of, of apps for the car. Bimmer Code has a lot of retrofitting functionality and coding options. I'll bring it up again when I talk about something else that I got later, but it's about $30 worth every penny and I have both Bimmer Code and Bimmer Link. So add another $60 there to the total cost. After the steering wheel, we got the uh, pedals, the M Performance looking uh, pedals. I got those from Amazon for $26.99. So those are really good upgrade. The OEM ones are, I think about $120 to 180. And, you know, spending a fifth of that cost and getting 80% of the quality, I think is much, much worth it because if anything goes wrong, just like the kidney grills, you can just replace them. So definitely a worthwhile upgrade. After that, we got the key fob the, from the G chassis uh, generation from Gates Innovation. So if you've ever seen Vehicle Viral's video, he did that on a few of his cars, including his M5, his Supra, and I think one of his three series. It's a phenomenal key. I absolutely love it. And it really gives the car a much more luxurious and modern feel. Um, it's very weighty. It's very high quality. And um, the company just did really great and they really care for their customers. So that key fob was $200.26 after shipping and taxes. After that, I got Burger Motorsports spacers from a forum member for $130. That was really easy process. He also gave me the extended lugs for that. If you do buy them new, they do come with them. Um, but if not, that will be something you need to add on because the standard lugs just aren't long enough after the spacers. So after that, uh, we have maintenance. This is something that is a running total, but I did a major refresh back in May, 2021. And that sort of has the initial cost that I spent there, plus everything I've been doing since. So the running total of maintenance cost is $1,941.36. But at the time, I think it was more, it was closer to $1,300 um, because there was just a lot of parts that I had bought at the time. 
in that maintenance refresh, I did all the fluids on the car. I did the front control arms, both the wishbone and the tension arm. Uh, I did the brake pads, brake fluid, brake lines, and I switched those to stainless steel. I also did uh, coil packs and spark plugs for when I do boot mode eventually, and finished it off with a new battery. Uh, next was an alignment plus a diagnosis. So I hadn't gotten an alignment since buying the car yet. Needed that. Um, had a diagnosis for my passenger side window because there was some air slipping by the seals um, because the window was sort of misaligned. So overall, a little bit more expensive at three seventy one forty one cents, but I had to do it. I, I something I just didn't want to do myself. Uh, next, we have the LED ballast modules for my driver's side headlight. Um, after a major rainstorm, I guess some water had leaked in and the angel eyes have these um, ballasts that control the uh, LED. So when those went out and it's good to replace them in pairs, just in case one has an issue, might as well replace both of them. And I bought them from have you Springfield, if I recall correctly. Um, I got them for $292.24. Uh, I did find some on eBay for $100 a pair, but I really don't know the quality of those and I didn't want to find out. Next was the LCI taillights. So, you know, I bought the car right as the LCI refresh had come around and the LCI taillights were all that F32 owners could talk about. And because of that, new sets were costing around $1,500 while the F30s could get them for as low as like 400 bucks. Um, so with used sets going for even a thousand dollars, I really didn't want to buy it at the time. But when a listing came on eBay from uh, an, a, a pre-LCI M4 that came with the harness, I hopped on that immediately. So I was able to get that uh, shipped with taxes for 597 and 56 cents. Um, super easy install and definitely one of my favorite uh, exterior mods that I've done. So finally we get to some modifications. So there was a forum member who was selling some N26 parts out in California. He was selling the full bolt-on kit for uh, Evolution Race Works. So that was the high flow catted down pipe, the intercooler, turbo to intercooler pipe, charge pipe, and all that together came out to 11.68 and 21 cents. Installed that late 2021 to get prepared for boot mode, which I would do at the beginning of 2022. I then bought the interior door trim from an M Sport model. So bought those on eBay for $135 and 31 cents. Next was the diverter valve and the inlet pipe. So I bought the GoFats Go Fast Bits diverter valve from another forum member, and that came out to $95. Definitely a little bit of a stretch for me. I wasn't a huge fan of the install, and honestly, I don't really feel much of the performance benefits, but a lot of people say it's a necessary upgrade, so, you know, up to you whether you want to do it. I would say no. Again, up to you. You decide. Um, the inlet pipe was $175.37. That's an FTP pipe that goes right onto your turbo. And mine broke on the little plastic bracket that sort of centers it for the stud. Um, and it gets really hot around there. So it just was so brittle and broke in my hand. Um, next was boot mode. So I got boot mode in March 2022 for $335.18. Uh, Pro Tuning Freaks is really awesome about after purchase support. So I was able to get that um, squared away with the previous owner. Now it only transfers your license, it doesn't transfer maps. So you will have to buy those on your own if you plan on changing your map in the future. Uh, I ended up going with Stage 2 93 Octane and kept it pretty stock, but there's a lot of uh, different customization you can make to uh, off the shelf tunes. Next was the front strut tower brace. So technically I didn't purchase this. This was a gift that I got for Christmas one year, um, but I did want to include it in the list of things I've done. As for cost, it goes for $161.95 and that's the Weischer Sport uh, Red model from ECS Tuning. 
Um, after that, I finally got a dash cam and I got the Aofio A129 Plus. And this is the dual model, so it's got the front and rear camera. The front was the 1440p, um, with the rear being 1080p in 60 FPS for both, which is great. Um, you could get just the A129, which is a 1080p front, but if you want better resolution, you can go for the Pro, which is a 4K, uh, 4K camera up front. That also includes a um, hard wiring kit for parking mode that also includes a hard wiring kit for parking mode so that came out to 120 dollars uh, even on amazon uh, there was a sale going on so that was really awesome next is sort of a sad purchase that i had to do so my car was broken into uh, late 2022 the thief had broken into my driver's side rear window and broke into my glove box so I had to get both those replaced. The window was from a, a wrecked M4 and that was $199. The glove box was $126.96. I was able to switch over the locking cylinder from my original into the new one. So my key still works for the locking function. Um, installation of that window as well was $300. So not too bad um, overall, but not a fun purchase. Uh, next was the seats. So I finally got M Sport seats in late 2022, around November, and I was able to get them from a uh, wrecked or a salvaged 4 Series. I bought these seats for $500 for both, as well as $400 in freight shipping, um, coming out to $900. That was by far one of my favorite upgrades and really, really changed how my driving feels now that I'm much more secure. Um, install was honestly pretty easy. I did have to add some wiring to add power for the additional uh, lumbar support, but they're still heated, uh, fully adjustable, and honestly, a really, really great upgrade. Uh, next was the Kony suspension upgrade with Eibach Pro Springs. So I separated this into three costs because uh, FCP Euro has a kit, but I also needed to purchase some things additionally with that kit as well as the springs came from a different website. So the Ibrox Pro Springs were $266.81. The Kony Special Active install kit that SCP Euro sort of designed uh, comes out to $13.29.84. And then some miscellaneous suspension mounting components were $141.18. So just a quick note on that, you need to be sure what top mounts you have. So I've got the M10 three bolts top hat while LCIs and late 2016 models have the five uh, M8 top hat um, mounts. So just be sure to converse with the FCP Euro order team. Um, I was able to get that swapped out, no, no problem. Um, and I also decided to go for the M4 bump stops. You will also need uh, dust covers and a few other components, but just do your research uh, for what you want to replace and you'll be fine. So the final thing that I've done since owning the car was an alignment. So after doing any suspension work, you should get an alignment done. And I got that done at a local European shop for $161.29. So for the final grand total for the five years of ownership plus modifications for a base model four cylinder four series BMW is 12, 12 $12,772.25. I broke this down by year. So if you just divide that by five, it comes out to about $2,500. Uh, insurance is $850 for full coverage every six months. So you're looking at about $3,500. Um, if you just want to count maintenance, I think my ownership is a little bit skewed, but if you just took that $2,000 that I mentioned earlier, divide that by five, you're getting about $400 um, in maintenance divided by five years. So again, if you want to just divide the whole cost of ownership that's the $3,500 if you just want to talk about the maintenance costs I only spent about $400 a year but my usage 
will be probably a lot different than you. So that's something that you need to keep in mind when buying these cars. So what is my conclusion? What's the final thoughts here? What can we surmise from this? Was spending $12,000 on this car worth it when I could have just bought a 435? Well, like I mentioned at the time, that wasn't in the budget and I wasn't looking to get a higher mileage 435. You could realistically find at the, at the time of, of me purchasing this car, the same mileage 435s at around 30 to $32,000. If you take the total cost of what I put in the car plus the purchase price of the car, you're looking at about $36,000, which had I waited a year or two, I could have gotten a, a 440 for that money. And you know, with that being said, is it worth spending that kind of money? And for me, it is, it, I think it was definitely worth it. It allowed me to really expand and explore my passions and learn how to wrench on my own car. You know, there were times where it was really stressful working on my car, but I knew that if I could get it running, then, you know, it, I would know that the car is healthy and ready to run for the future. With that being said, what are some things to look out for? Um, this, this isn't a comprehensive N20 ownership guide, but some things that I still haven't replaced yet are the gaskets. So I haven't done valve cover, no oil pan, no oil filter housing gasket. That's something that is very common on these cars with leaks happening all the time. On top of that, the timing chain guides, it's just a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. And so if you're looking to buy one of these cars, you need to know if these, these guides have been replaced. Now, fortunately, if you are a current owner of an N20 or N26, you may be able to be compensated for those repairs um, depending on your usage. Uh, based off of the BMW uh, class action lawsuit. So I'll post a picture of it here while I'm talking about it. But basically, depending on what category you're in depends on your usage and how much you'll get compensated back. You could get compensated 100% or you could get compensated none and you have to pay for it all out of pocket. But regardless of your situation, that's something that you always need to think about. These pre-LCI N20s really had a lot of issues with the timing chains, but I fortunately have not had that issue yet. Some people have gone uh, upwards of 150,000 miles on their original guides, but others have reported, you know, less than 50,000 miles. Uh, I'm right smack dab in the middle, so I just crossed the 60,000 mile mark. And like I said, I'm hoping to run this thing to the ground, essentially. When the time comes for a rebuild, I plan on doing that as well. So if I need to do rod bearings, if I need to do all the gaskets, full bottom and top end rebuild, I want to keep this car running. I hope that answers some of your questions as to the cost of one of these cars. If you are always buying from the dealership, you could be spending two, three, four times as much just on labor because that's where the dealership makes their money. You can buy these parts yourself and do it. And that's what's so wonderful about aftermarket support and these, these types of platforms. FCP Euro, ECS Tuning, Tuner Motorsports, uh, Bimmer World, I, the list goes on and on. As long as you can find the part, you can do it yourself. And the forums are such a huge support uh, in terms of knowledge, uh, people that are willing to help you and answer any questions that you could have. So with how popular BMW is, there's no shortage of information, especially on platforms such as the F30 and F32. You really don't feel like you're ever alone in your issues. So thank you guys for watching and sticking around till the end with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date anytime we upload a new video. If you want to check out something a little different, go check out our video at Coda doing the Super Lap Battle event. If you want to check out the review of my car or any of the other platforms we have reviewed, go check out that playlist as well. Otherwise, thank you for watching. My name is Donovan, and until next time, see you later.